solid copper hollow point. So there's a bullet right at the very back of the clay slab. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. Today we're doing something pretty fun. A little bit of an ammo test. I've already gotten some velocity on this stuff and I'll roll that in throughout the video. But what we're testing today is this stuff right here. Some Colt solid copper hollow points. I've got this in four uh, different chamberings, 45, 40, uh, 380, 9mm, and I'm going to go from 380 on up for all those different rounds. And what we're doing today is going to be kind of fun. What, would I, what I want to try to do is twofold. One, I want to try to capture some expanded bullets and see how they look, see if they look like what they're advertised at. And number two, I want to see if we can capture a cavity expansion. And the way we do that, or the way I hope I'll be able to do that, is with a little bit of clay. What I've got here is some of that pottery clay, the stuff you see in, uh, you know, Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore using this stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to shoot this thing. We've got a couple of water bottles here, plus a little backstop to hopefully capture our bullet. And um, we'll see what the expansion looks like. We'll see what the cavity looks like. We're going to have some fun. Stick around. Is 155 grain, block 23. We have a failure to ten ten. Grip on it is a love. All right, let's kick this party off with the LCP and 380. All right, here's a look at our cavity. That is pretty nice. And the expansion on that, as luck would have it, I forgot my ruler, but I do have a little piece of paracord here. So what I'm gonna do is mark this paracord. And then at home, what I'm gonna do is measure that out and give you an accurate reading. So in post, you'll see that. And here's a look at the bullet. But that has got some pretty much perfect expansion on it. Looks really nice. All right, we've got the clay back into a block. Now we're gonna try the nine millimeter version of this round through my Canik TP9 SF. All right, take a look at what's happened here. So there's our cavity, how it passed through the entire block of clay. Looks like it sort of came out of the top, curved up and came out the top at some point. Pass through our first bottle, stuck into our second bottle right there. You just see some water coming out. And the interesting part of all of this is that we actually lost the pedals to our 9mm round. <music> 20 pounds of clay. Look at that, my hands are pretty clean, but you wouldn't have known it about five minutes ago. Good thing I've got all this water with me, I'm just going to say that. Next up, 40 cal, Glock 23, let's see how it does. We don't appear to have any penetration into the water bottles. That's really interesting. I'd expect the 40 to do a little bit better. We got some pretty cool looking expansion happening though. All right, that is basically the expanse right there. But look at this, look at that. You can just make out that rifling. And not the rifling so much as the petals opening up and scraping away clay as it was going through. That is cool. And the 40 appears to have perfect expansion with all the petals still attached. That one stayed in good shape. 
Last gun, 45. Throughout the video, I completely forgot to mention that JNG Sales sent this ammo to me for testing and review and basically for playing with. They got some of it in. They thought it'd be really cool if they could get it into some hands of uh, some independent video makers like myself. We could test it, see how it does. Clearly the nine millimeter had a problem. Pedals flew off into the clay. Now again, maybe clay is not the best testing medium you can get. So maybe it's not representative of what flesh will do, but the pedals still fell off. And they didn't do that on the 380 or on the 40 yet. We're about to find out if they do that on the 45. All right, I think it's interesting that even though we clearly got the largest transference of energy from the 45, we still did not, or did we? Nope, didn't penetrate a water jug. It was only the nine millimeter and that's only because it flew out. And let's go ahead and cut this open. I hope we got our bullet in here. It seems like we must. Yeah, there it is right at the very back. 20 pounds of clay and it stopped at that first water jug, but it went all the way through the entire length of the clay. And I'll have those dimensions uh, for you on screen right now, how long and how wide the clay was. But it went all the way through that and stopped at the water jug. So quite interesting, but let's look at that cavity. By the way, our bullet is totally intact. No missing pedals. It is a completely fully formed fully opened bullet and opening up that cavity looks like we've got well as I said before it went all the way to the back so that's really where it stopped and you can see these little striations in there where those pedals had opened up and were basically carving away at the clay as it was passing through really really cool and look at the size of that cavity I mean look at that it's enormous All right, I was kind of disappointed in the quality of the data that I got for the nine millimeter, given that it did kind of curve up and out of the clay and uh, lost its pedals, etc. So we're gonna give that one one more try with the Canik TP9SF. See if we can't get a little better representation of what this bullet can do. All right, I have a feeling that that was much more representational of what this is supposed to do, what the nine millimeter is supposed to do. But what's interesting is we still got one broken jug. Just barely though. Oh, no, is the bullet in there? I think the bullet's in there. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, guys. Well, I'm glad we did it. There's the nine millimeter bullet missing all but one of its pedals. All right, clearly the nine millimeter bullet is weaker than the rest. We've done it twice now into that clay medium and uh, twice it has lost all or most of its pedals. Straight down, but there's a look at our cavity. And it went the full length of the block, which again, I'll give you those dimensions in post. All right guys, well once again, this has easily been the dirtiest video I've had to do for you in a while. But it was a pleasure. I had a great time. If you enjoyed it too, make sure and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you never have and you just keep coming back and watching my videos. And, uh, you know, visit JNG Sales and check out some of this ammo. I think it's pretty good stuff, especially that 45 was really impressive. Again, thanks for watching. I'm a late Boy Scout. We'll see you on the next one. And that is a table full of Cold War goodness right there, don't you think? And it's appropriate, I think, that the Makarov or Makarov, however you want to pronounce it, it's fine with me. I'm just going to go with Makarov for this review, deal with it. It's appropriate that it's flanked by these two guns. 